I will, I am building a brand that go beyond food. But everything I do is associated to restaurants, food, and people eating something somehow, somewhere. I had the opportunity to be awarded with Michelin star, great reviews, but that's not what I'm aiming for. This country has already enough stuttered chef that you don't even have the time to check them all out. That's not what I'm aiming for. What this planet is missing is grandmas. Because grandmas are older, they die often, and memory is gone with them. I don't want to be the best chef on this planet. I want to be everybody's grandmother. Growing up, I don't have a good story like most chefs do. I didn't grow up with bounties on food on my table and everybody gathered together around a feast. There was no feast at my house. Food stamp and welfare barely bought me shoes when I was a kid. And the food that we were buying was never too much and never too good. So what that made me is very conscious about doing the best that I can do with the little that I might have. Quality and consistency doesn't come necessarily from the best prime ingredient, because let's be realistic. 80% of America can afford, cannot afford prime superior quality ingredient. That's, that's the reality. So quality and consistency come from the expertise of the hands that handle the food. I can make the worst cut of meat into the best meatball you ever had. I can make the cheapest eggs, not the plus A, the cheapest, smallest, weird eggs you've ever seen into the most delicious pasta. Now that, that's how I grew up. What I serve today to my customer is the best I can find. But that's another story. I'm a restaurateur, I'm a chef, and that's what defines me today. But the hunger and the willingness, the expertise in not wasting money and, and all those things that makes me a good businessman in the restaurant field because at this point, the customers are happy and my investor makes money. You know, in, in making food, there is different style of cooking. The style I have, it's very rustic. It's not meant to be precise. It's meant to accomplish a task while enhancing the flavor of the ingredient. My approach of food is very minimalistic, very mainstream. I get good ingredient, as fresh as possible. I cook them simply, I serve them right. That's it. There is no packaging, there is no freezing, there is no processing. Everything has to be done right. My philosophy in food is that if you want to keep your body clean inside, the outside, as far as your handle is, it's gotta get a little dirty because you gotta make the food. I say that my presentation from the scale to one to ten is a seven eight, meaning it's pretty, but it's not precise. It's not tweezers and smoking gun and three foot tall dusting maneuver. My presentation is in your face. I will never sacrifice flavor to enhance presentation. Something that will take me 20 minutes to eat, it will never take me five people and 20 minutes to plate. It's a waste of time and it's a waste of money. You know, you can, I run a 600 people cover restaurant every night with 10 people in the kitchen. There is certain chef out there that they have three, four people just to plate one single dish. And that's stupid to me. That's not cost effective. And with all due respect, you're wasting capability. You're wasting capacity of increasing the business because of ego. And that's ego is never a good things in the kitchen. I, I think that when it comes down to food, uh, I create a real personal connection with every dish I make. 
I'm not only trying to season it properly, to cook it to the perfect point, but I'm also almost talking to the food I'm making, asking the food back, how can I make you better? And for as crazy as it sound, you see florists that they speak to their plants. I speak to my pizzas and my pastas because they are about to be eaten by somebody that has to judge me for the taste, the presentation of it. So my food has to be always craveable. You have to be the guy that gets the bowl of the food I make and you want to rub it all over your face because it's so good. Every restaurant I have, beside few Italian staples that I need to have in my kitchen, coming from my old country, I always try to outsource every ingredient I have within a hundred miles from the community where the restaurant is placed. Because the reality is that it's pointless for me to feed you strawberry shortcake in December and buy strawberry that come from Mexico. It's pointless, you know, it's not what it's meant to be. I have, I have a lot of good relationship with farmers. Think about it, when you go to a restaurant, wouldn't you want to meet the chef? Wouldn't you want to meet the sommelier? When you take vacation and you go to Italy, to my beautiful country, don't you want to go see the vineyard? Don't you want to go to those farm that you've never been in the United States because the biggest, the closest things you have to a farm is a whole food market? You know, I know those people. I grew up with those people. I was one of those guys growing his own vegetable. So for me, the connection with the people that makes my food is as good as trusting the babysitter that is gonna babysit your children. Because all those vegetables, those meat, those, they're like babies to me. They're like, you gotta nurture them because tomorrow they're gonna be on somebody else's livelihood and they gotta feed the people that you love. So for me, growing up with chicken coop, rabbit, goats, and growing my own stuff, it's, it's almost impossible now in the United States but knowing the people that does it for you, that's the best thing that's, that can happen to your table. It's, it's, just a, it's just a personal connection with the food. I grew up by going you know, outside of my house and picking my own stuff. I was the guy deciding what tomato in the plant was going into my food. I was the guy going in the backyard, tasting the lattes, get a little snail out of it, clean it with my hand and taste it, because in this modern time, today in America, is a luxury finding a snail on your salad. Because that means that there is no chemicals, there is no pesticide, there is no crap that is harmful for you and your kids and everybody around you. Because listen to me, if a bug or a snail is not comfortable eating your salad, you shouldn't be too comfortable either. I'm Fabio Viviani and we are gonna teach you how to make great simple food with an Italian. You know, I have a web show, a um, very successful web show. It's called Ciao Ciao, it's on Yahoo. And I have so many people stopping me and say, dude, thank you. And I'm like, what did I do? I'm watching your show and your video and thanks to you, my wife, it's a different person right now. She's so happy because I cook for her. I cook for my family, I cook for her. And you make food so easy to understand. Thank you. And they walk away and I'm like, oh, that's cool. That is really cool, you know? Ah! Si usa questo, non devi usare metallo. That hurt. I'm 33 and I'm getting beat up by my mom on Ciao Ciao. My sense of fulfillment as a chef comes from seeing people happy about the food I make, although I'm not happy sometimes about it because I'm very critical with myself. I'm very hard on myself. But the biggest joy that I get from this business, especially now that I'm a public figure, it's when people see me and the all they want is a hug. Can I hug you? And I'm like, yes, of course you can hug me. Do you know why? Because hug is such a powerful tool to make people happy. People are getting this bad day and I just go up to them and I say, dude, do you need a hug? What do you mean? Just give, it a, give, me, a man, give me a man hug. And they start laughing. You know, so when people see me, they want to take a picture with me, and especially kids. When a kid come over, oh, I melt. 
I just go like jelly. I mean, don't get me wrong. In business, I'm a tank. I'm like a military full metal jacket tank. And when you're a tank, things don't happen to you. You're happening to them. Don't get in my way, because I'm a tank, you're gonna get run over. But when people ask me for a picture or a hug, or there is kids, oh, I, I melt. I'm like a jellyfy. Three, two, one. Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Fabio Viviani. I'm a chef and a restaurateur. And since I'm standing whole day, I want you to know that I have no clue what I'm talking about right now. Oh. I think one of my biggest, one of my biggest strengths as a person and as a businessman is that I value every relationship I encounter. Every person I work with, I work for, or I team up with, with the same respect and the same devotion that I do with anyone. You know, you gotta be always good with everybody as much as you can be. Because, you know, you have one last name, and I'm carrying the same last name that my grandfather has. So for me, if you nurture the relationship that you have from the last dishwasher you hire to your main investor in the business, you're gonna have an army of people ready to take a bullet for you because they know that you would take a bullet for them. In the same principle that you wanna be in bed with a girl that you can last for 50 years, marry, have children with, you don't wanna jump bed around with people you're in business with because it's not productive. You know, change your partner in bed or in business every three months that doesn't build legacy. And we're in the business of building legacy. We gotta build a long lasting legacy because that's the only way that you're gonna be old and happy. If you're asking me, yes, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a TV personality, whatever. I was on a TV show, I have cookbook, I'm a cookbook author. I am everything the business make me be, but at the end of the day, when the lights are out and the music stops, I'm still a chef. 